Good morning from Panhandle Outdoors with Winston Chester. Panhandle Outdoors, your source for fishing, hunting, and information for folks who enjoy the great outdoors. Now sit back, relax. It's Panhandle Outdoors. Good morning, folks. Welcome to Panhandle Outdoors. I'm Winston Chester. I'm glad to hear this Christmas Eve morning of 2012. We're all excited. I, I was thinking right before it came on the air, it, it's just an exciting time of the year. And I, I hope you still have that Christmas spirit and and I had a joy in your heart. I just, I still get excited at Christmas time. Just the whole, the whole thing about Christmas. Uh, everybody just so happy, and, and the reason we celebrate Christmas and the joy that the kids are getting all. I just, I could go on and on about it. But let's get started with our weather. Brought to us by Haney Technical Center at Baldwin Road and Highway 77. Run by there, uh, make it the goal of 2013. You run by there and see Principal Mike Eppenstall, the staff there. Uh, a lot of outdoorsmen up there, some hunters and fishermen, some campers, all in that staff and faculty up there. So we're about to visit those folks. They're good folks. And I promise you they'll help you out. Uh, now, we're going to, weather-wise, we're going to get into 7 today. We're looking at maybe 70, 71 today. So uh, it might be a 70 type of Christmas. We may have a little bit of rain coming on later this week, but uh, we'll just wait and see. Low tonight, 58, and water temperature dropped down to, to 60, I mean to 50. I'm sorry, 67, I was right the first time, 67 degrees. Now, talk about the tides, let's look at the tides after Christmas. Uh, we're looking at, first of all, today's tide will be low at 444 and a high at 513, December 24th. But now, if you look on at the rest of the week, I know you're going to take a couple of days off and all, but if you decide like Thursday, Friday, or Saturday for fishing, you're looking at some excellent uh, tides, uh, good morning tides coming in in the afternoon, some really strong tides coming up, so we'll go ahead and look forward to that. And now also every Monday, even on Christmas Eve Monday, we like to look at our moon chart, see what's going on over the moon. And the reason we get some of these really strong tides, because the 28th of the month, this coming Friday, we're looking at a full moon. The moon's going to be waxing all week. We're looking at Friday to be the full moon, Friday night, a lot of, a lot of light on Saturday night. So uh, take advantage of that. I know uh, you might want to take some pictures. And also Jupiter will be uh, in good view if it's not clouded. Also, that should be a good time to... Uh, to do some uh, stargazing in December to January. Wintertime stargazing is just excellent because the skies are so clear and all. All right, well that takes care of everything for our weather. We're gonna take our first break and come back with some really good stuff. Welcome back. Uh, one of the first things I wanna talk about this morning and, and we're gonna talk more about it later on in a couple more weeks, but, but from now and a couple more weeks, we're talking about the rut, the rut. You know, and it's coming on in some areas I was talking uh, the other night, I was over uh, at, a, at a diver's den to get together and ran into Ron Childs from Mexico Beach. And Ron's uh, roots from up there in Georgia. And uh, I get tickled at how Panama City is the dividing line. You know, from Panama City down toward Carabell, all, all those folks, uh, most of them have their roots in Georgia. From Pan that's eastward from Panama City. And then westward from Panama City, uh, here and then over in, in Walton County and, and Pensacola and all those all those routes come from Alabama. The Panama City dividing line and uh, I get a kick out of both groups because I really enjoy being around them. But Ron was talking about, you know, he does a lot of diving and does the Mexico Beach Artificial Reef Association a tournament and all. We talked to Ron a couple times every year, but he was telling me the other night he loves to hunt. But his, his family's from up there way across Georgia, which is sort of southeastern Georgia. And he was talking about their rut came in in October the 15th. And he was talking about hunting it up there. And that's how, remember, I tell you, it works from east to west. But it's getting ready to, uh, to come in our area now here in the Panhandle. And all we, you know, we're in Tallahassee and all. They've already started to get it in Tallahassee, Leon County, Madison County. But let's look right real quick at a Florida buck register. This, this is always interesting. Every year or two, I mention it. And this, it's, uh, I got this from the FWC uh, web page, but also Woods and Water Magazine carries it. I just want to, what I want to do, I'm just going to, if I can, I'm going to go down here and show you the top 10, okay? Now, we're going to, on the left, I'm going to make it a little bit larger so we can see it. This is a typical. These, these are the names we want to see. And, and that number one buck, and I've told you about this young, young man. He's not a young man anymore, but he shot a young man, Larry Furr. Larry Furr is my first cousin. Our, our moms are sisters. And he killed this deer January 1st, 1977. Yeah, I've had an interview with him. If you've seen it, it's in my archives. Uh, scored 168 points in one eighth. And uh, it, he shot that with a shotgun, but he talked about the method. Second place, I mean, look at the counties now. Second place, Leon County, uh, real close. And then Pasco County, that was in 83, 1990. Let's go down to Dixie County. Bobby Davis got it with a Ruger, 223 Ruger, scored 159. 
Then comes Alachaway County, Felton, Sheffield, got 159. Look how close fourth and fifth place was. He shot it, shot it with 30 off six. But one of the most fascinating ones right here, these, these next two right here, uh, Lachaway County, David McQueen. Folks, he got that in 2008, but look how he took it. Archery. That's the only one in the top 10 taking the archery, and uh, 157 points is huge. And look, he got it in October 12th. That's the only October deer in the top 10. And then comes uh, Chris Harrell out of Madison County. All these are North Florida counties. Uh, he got a, he just had a modern weapon in 1987. Then another one taken in 1987. Number eight was Gary, Gary Lee's from Taylor County over there in Perry. Look how close it was. Two eighths of one quarter of a point between uh, seven, uh, seven and eighth place. How close that was. Then really close right behind that. Number nine, number 10. Uh, we're taking Rifle, uh, Ricky from Madison County, Ricky Ricciardi, and then Gary Borland from Martin County. And that's the only South Florida County. That's down there. Uh, and that was 2001, but I remember seeing a picture of that 2001. So that's the top 10, and uh, like I say, that 1977 record still holds on with Larry Furnow. I just thought that was fascinating, and we'll talk more about that. We did have a, a brand new entrance come in at number 11, but didn't break the top 10. But this past year, in 2011, deer was brought in at, at number 11. So we'll talk more about that later. Okay, uh, I just trying to think of something really quick for. For families to do uh, and, and Christmas camping, always talking about camping, y'all. You know, July Fourth and holidays and all. I know some of y'all go camping between Christmas, New Year's, and St. Andrews State Park, to Real State Park, St. George Island State Park, Henderson Beach State Park. All of those are excellent places to get a break and get away between Christmas and New Year's. So I want to, uh, you know, encourage y'all to do that. Okay. Also, we're talking about prizes now. In 2013, I want you to go ahead and start registering. We'll talk more about this later, too. We'll go ahead and start registering for the prizes in 2013. But if you would, wait till after January the 1st. So we sort of keep them all straight and uh, empty out the pickle jar from all the 2012 entrants. We, we've had a great year in prizes. I was adding up. Folks, we've given over $8,000 worth of prizes away from Panhandle Outdoors in the 12 months we've been doing it. And uh, thanks to our, you know, to you, our viewers. This is always a viewer appreciation what we're trying to do here. So we'll do that. Now, I was thinking also last night, putting together some stories of the year. Uh, later on, you know, we're going to start doing the best 2012 videos. But just some of the biggest stories of the year off the top of my head, I was thinking uh, one, one of the biggest stories has got to be this bears. And people talked about it, and I've had more pictures, I mentioned it before, more pictures sent on bears this year than I ever have. And, and it's because of the cameras and all, but most important, it's the prevalence of bears. They're all over the place. And hunter after hunter tells me about it. And, and the FWC, they're well aware of it, but there's just a lot of bears out. So to me, that's the story of the year as far as the outdoor activities. And also, uh, if I had to do a fish of the year, I got tickled last night. They just jumped right out on, on, on top of me, too. That's got to be the red snapper. The, the abundance of the red snapper in our Gulf waters is just phenomenal. And I hate to use these terms like this, but you, you go fishing, and they're just red. You know, the time, I, I went quite a bit this past year, and a lot of my buddies and a lot of our viewers went, and everybody just could not get a red snapper. I went on, on little private uh, boats. I went on big charter boats. I went on head boats. And the story was the same across the board. Red snapper, red snapper, red snapper. And uh, it looks like our grouper season, it was a, a grouper was, you know, about average. And the grouper season looks like it'll be the same this coming year from what we can tell. And red snapper, the National uh, Marine Fisheries has not come up out with the red snapper regulations yet, but I hope it's a little more liberal than it has been. So it's, it's just a lot of red snapper out there, okay? And uh, that, uh, even I was talking about diver dinner the other day, these divers talked about going down and they, they just said it was this wall of, of, of red snapper, wall, just a huge wall of them and, and uh, just all over the place. So that was, that was, just wanted to throw those in there about some of the things that was happening in 2012. Let's take this break. We're going to come back with the interview of the year for 2012. We'll be right back. All right, welcome back. Glad you're with us on this Christmas Eve. I know you're excited. You've probably got a lot of last-minute things to do and all, but uh, hopefully you'll just uh, relax and enjoy the great uh, Christmas season here. So uh, I'm getting ready for the interview of the year, and I, I had some good interviews this, this year, and I enjoy interviewing people. Uh, we do a lot of, you know, interview these bass tournaments and just, you know, the local fishermen, and uh, I enjoy doing those. And every now and then we get a chance to, to, uh, to interview some big name guy, and I have yet to find anything but just nice guys want to interview them. You think these guys are, 
you know, aloof and, and away from us all. But I, I got to interview Hank Parker back uh, uh, back in the springtime, and I was so impressed. Uh, to me, Hank Parker is, is a legend. He, uh, what he has accomplished in his, his lifetime in, in, as far as uh, the television shows and, and the kind of person he is, though, is just is awesome. And I, I got to talk to him and, and did this little interview with him, and I was just I was just thrilled when I did it. And uh, a guy, we were up there at uh, – at the uh, Sims Farm up there off Highway uh, 77, Highway 20, and, and just had the best time. But as I decided, to me, if I had to pick out, a, you know, one of the, my favorite, if not the favorite interview I did this past year, it had to be with Hank Parker. So, uh, Jeff, let's look at the best interview of 2012 on Panhandle Outdoors. Oh, you did? <laughs> All right, folks, we're up here at the Sims Farm for the big fish fry cookout. We're going to view with Bill Mathis, my son Chip. Yeah. Taking up tickets back here, and you can see we got Hank Parker up there. So we're gonna walk up here and watch the crowd gather. Beautiful place up here. You ever been up here? No, I haven't. Okay. This is Mr. Wilson. Oh, don't put me on TV. Okay, yeah, well, listen, this <laughs> Have is you great. Met Hank yet? We're on the way up there. Okay. We're on the way up there, right. but uh, we're going to just get in line, I think. All right. All right. Hey, I've heard of the wise men. Oh, right here. <laughs> Here's the wise men right here. That's them. That's them. <laughs> uh, Steve? Dave. You know, I, I've, got, I've had your grandkids in my class and all, and they learned some really good manners. Now, where did they learn that from? They didn't learn it from me. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all looking forward to this, Bob? Yes, sure. All right. There's uh, Hank Parker right over there entertaining the crowd. Hey, John Steve, we got his shirt on. Look at that there. Captain. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, you know, we had that video taking the sister out uh, about yeah. last month. You did a good job. Uh, she loved it. I like how Stingy's got says only, uh, only waves can tip a boat and only you can tip the captain. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is where she comes. Tell you about your other day. Nice to meet you, Mike. Oh, you I can't do TV in the morning. much in the morning. I had to wipe my eyes <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, I'll tell you what, that was one of the students you just talked about. Oh, really? Uh, 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 How about Charles? Uh, or? Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, 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 I hate coming to your class. I keep going to dance with my friend Nick. Yeah, I need to learn to do it. Hey, listen. Hey, how you doing? Good. Hey, I got him on the Wednesday day. I can't do it. Yeah, yeah. I got him on the Wednesday day. 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 I asked the way rolling it, rolling it through it, it blew me away. It's a beautiful thing when I see it. I'm telling you. Well, we appreciate you coming down here. It's good to be here, man. You're hanging around some good people. Yeah, that's good. We don't know about that. We got some fresh carp coming in. Yeah, imported from Lake Erie, I guess. Well, Ricky can cook it. He'll tell us. He'll tell us his past before the night's over. He'll have up out of the lead. Tackle sales will tell you what you want to hear. Hey, all sales will tell you what you want to hear. Well, listen, I want you to say good morning to our Panhandle Outdoor Viewers. Good morning to the Panhandle Outdoor View Outdoor Viewers. Let's do that again. Uh, take two. This guy, this guy needs a more practice. And I'm with Winston Chester, and Winston and I go back 100 years. He taught me everything I know about fishing. I like So he has really, really schooled me. I still got a lot to learn, and I call Chester from time to time when I get in a jam, and I can't figure out what I need to do next. So, Chester, I really 
really appreciate it. We just want to say thumbs up to all the Panhandle viewers out there. You guys hang in there and keep watching on Chester, and you never know where you may go. Oh, man. <laughs> you know, Thank people, you. Yes, sir. Y'all believe all of that. I should have said Mr. Chester. That's what we call him. Some people call him Winston, but I call him Mr. Chester. So y'all keep listening to Mr. Chester. <laughs> Great job, buddy. <laughs> we don't even take no takes on that. All right, welcome back. Hope you enjoyed that. That was, you know, I enjoyed doing that, and uh, that was one of the top interviews. Enjoyed also having Steve Sutherland on the show, too. We'll talk about some other stuff later. But let's look at our times. Uh, we're looking at 8.47 or 10.47 this morning is our, our time in late this afternoon, or really tonight, from 9.10 to 11.10, so those two-hour blocks. And uh, what I want to do uh, talk about uh, the resolutions now, when we when we get back, we're going, to, we're, going, we're going to be doing the best of 2012. We picked out some of our best shows the next couple of days. You're going to really enjoy seeing these videos and, and uh, there's our top videos of the year. So we'll enjoy seeing those, enjoy doing those for you. But uh, also, be, during the week and all, send me some resolutions you're going to have for 2013, especially if you can do some outdoor resolutions and all, and, uh, and tell us about and we'll share them with our viewers. Okay, and I, I was thinking also about, I, I was looking at on my list of uh, some of my most, the most enjoyable, if I could just pick out one of the most enjoyable things, it was easy in 2011 to pick out the most enjoyable. It was the, the tarpon trip I took down to Boca Grand, catching that big old 180-pound tarpon. That, that was my most enjoyable trip of 2011, along with the, uh, the hunt up there in Greenville, uh, getting that eight-point buck up there in Greenville. But also, uh, I was thinking about this year, if I could pin, you know, pinpoint my most favorite outdoor activity, it was, it was a little hard, but it, it, after I thought about it, it, it was sort of a series. You know how we talked, we covered about doing the dove hunts and, and preparing the dove fields and all. And I, it's something I, I was able to get back into from when I, I hadn't done it in a long time. I used to just love the dove hunt, and, and uh, Walter had gotten some property and, and, and uh, acquired it and would, looked at it. It was all set up for dove field uh, set up already and we just jumped in there we brought us tractor up there you saw the videos and then we had a couple of really nice dove shoes it wasn't you know we didn't you know get a bunch of birds we got some birds but just getting back to that feeling of of those dove shoes when i was growing up they're just special in my uh, i have a special place in my heart those dove shoes so getting back to dove shooting this past year has been my highlight in outdoors and then followed closely by catching all those red snapper uh that was just it's been a fun year uh, fishing and, and hunting so uh uh, and I, you know, that's the thing about it. You make such good memories in the outdoors with, you know, doing things with your, with your friends and family. And, and I'm, I'm looking forward to 2013. It has some great things lined up. I, I've, I've already talked to one of my old college buddies down on the Daytona Beach. We're going to do a fishing trip. I've got another tarpon trip lined up. <clears throat> I've got a, uh, got a hog hunt lined up. I got all kinds of things already lined up for 2013. So anyway, it's just been it's been a, a fun year, and I, I enjoy bringing it to you on the show, and I, I enjoy the feedback y'all send us, and it means a lot to us. And and we just don't, you know we'll keep bringing our A game, and appreciate all the things that Jeff Jeff does. You know, Jeff Peck just does a tremendous job uh, running these cameras and setting everything up, and, and putting the show together, putting it on YouTube, and and he, Jeff's my right hand man. We just wouldn't come on the show without Jeff doing it. And I would, I would be remiss if I, I didn't thank Gail. Uh, she does uh, most of my editing and, and keeps me straight, does my outline and, and tells me what I gotta do. And, and uh, she, I just couldn't do it without her. So between Jeff and Gail, that's our, that's our production of, of Panhandle Outdoors. So I, I appreciate uh, and all, all their help. Let's look at some pictures, that's my, some random pictures. And you know, I'm, I've got them on my iPad now. And so I, I, I was telling Jeff, I've saved a lot of ink uh, this past six or seven months, we're printing them up. I used to print them up, put them over here in this little easel. But now we can go to the iPad, and I, I've, I've got them saved in here. And I, I have so many of them saved in here, I don't know where to start. And I was looking at them. I said, well, uh, let's start off with, with this group right here. Uh, well, I guess we can get up there, Jeff. Okay, look at here. We're talking about Red Snapper. This is Steve Sutherland and his family and his sister and his two brothers on the Red Snapper trip. We talked about all the Red Snapper and all. Uh, that's that's some of them right there, and uh, we'll go on down. I, I would be uh, I would be remiss if I would not put uh, my my fishing buddy uh, Bill Allen in here. Bill is just he's so dependable, and he calls me all the time about outdoors and fishing, and <clears throat> he substitutes for me and does a great job. But Bill is an excellent outdoorsman, excellent fisherman. So I appreciate all the things that Bill Allen does. Uh, we we've had uh, you know so many things were sent to me and all. <clears throat> but we we've got we've got to we've got to show this this uh, picture here because 
the bears. The bears have been all over, and and they continue to harass our hunters and all. But they, it's almost comical here, and everybody talk about them. It's just it's something that we we have to to put up with. And then uh, also this is a, this is not a real pretty picture right here, but I wanted to show you this was a, a local incident where an arrow went. You know, we're talking about the safety of hunting. It's a great time to talk about the safety of hunting and and tree stands and archery or or whatever, whatever we do, just, just be really, really careful. Let me scroll on down here. Uh, uh, you know, folks, now, this is a, this picture was sent to us. This is a panhandle picture of a fallow deer out in, in, you know, right here in the panhandle uh, taken with our game cameras. Boy, these game cameras have, have helped out tremendously, so it's been really nice, nice doing that. I'm gonna, I've got a bunch more pictures, and I, I'll just show you picture after picture. That's just some of them just, just did it random. So, but we're going to, we're going to start wrapping things up for, for uh, this show, and I just wanted to, we're going to end it with a, with a Christmas carol by uh, Maddie McKenzie Chester, uh, and we're going to, uh, this is from my family to your family. I just want to uh, wish you just a very, very Merry Christmas and a joyous holiday season, and, and, you know, take time to reflect upon, you know, this past year and, and spend some quality time with family. Remember what the reason for the season was the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and, and celebrate that and celebrate with your family and just have a great and happy uh, holiday season, okay? We're going to wrap it up today. You do something good for somebody, even on Christmas Eve, do something really good for somebody. Merry Christmas to all of you, from my family to your family, and God bless. Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer Had a very shiny nose And if you ever saw it You would even say it glows all of the other reindeer used to laugh and call him names. They never let poor Rudolph join in any reindeer games. Then one foggy Christmas Eve, Santa came to say, Rudolph, with your nose so bright, won't you guide my sleigh tonight? Then all the reindeer loved him as they shouted out with glee. Rudolph the red-nosed reindeer, you'll go down in history. Merry Christmas from Panhandle Outdoors. Thanks for joining us for Panhandle Outdoors with Winston Chester. Panhandle Outdoors features hunting, fishing, and other activities and information to help you enjoy the great outdoors. Join us next time for Panhandle Outdoors.